por favor No me atormente Grábate en tu mente Nuestra despedida Ya no queda nada Howdy, folks. Today, let's talk about the Queen of Audio Giblets, or Gimlets, Giblets. Um, I talked about them on a previous video, and it was quite harsh. And uh, well, I could tell you a few things about that. So, first off, these have a quite a heavy shell, quite heavy indeed. Uh, they chip easily, as we can see over here. So they're probably some type of steel shell, chip easily, but they're only $60. Um, as far as the look and the overall uh, aesthetics of these, eh, no. Uh, I could uh, leave these behind, but they work, and they're not, like, extremely heavy, and the bore length are okay, so they're not, like, uh, Stellaris levels of stupidness, but uh, we could do better. All right, 60 bucks though. The performance of these is actually really, really good for 60 bucks, and uh, it took me a while to warm up to these, probably about two weeks, honestly. Um, Paul Wasabi, thanks for sending me these, <clears throat> and you're wrong, they're actually not that crap. They're good. They're quite good. And I'll just uh, give my impressions of why. So, we've already talked about the shells, the fit, and all that stuff. Let's pop over to the desktop. Welcome back. Queen of Audio Gimlet. They have a 10 millimeter LCP uh, diaphragm dynamic driver. They are 59 bucks. Impedance of 32 ohm, sensitivity 108 dB, and uh, some other blah, blah, blah. Now, um, when I first got these, I basically took them out walking, running my doggies, and I was using my phone as I usually do just to get first impressions because I'm lazy. And I was not that impressed. <clears throat> they really seemed very in my face, a little peaky, and uh, overall, uh, not my favorite. And then, uh, you know, based on what Paul said, that, that pretty much I kind of like discounted them. However, um, been tuning, uh, well, I've been reviewing things today, and I've also been tuning headphones for the last week, and I uh, put these back in my ears and uh, was pleasantly surprised. I'm using my Gashelli Archel 2.5 XL 2 watt amplifier, which absolutely does better with these. They do scale with a better amplifier than with a phone. And Paul's like, oh, so you're using like, what, a $600 stack with your $60 headphones? It's like, yeah, and? <laughs> so what? Uh, I get his point, though. In any case, um, these actually have really good performance for what they are, in my opinion. Um, as far as how they fit, I would call them, like, fine. We'll just call them fine. They're not bad. Just because the bores aren't too thick and they're not too long, you can get them in your ears, probably get a nice seal, and uh, end of story. Uh, you may look ugly doing it, but cool, good enough. Cool. All right, what's the tuning like on these? So I had to do, like, honestly, I was having a really hard time figuring that out uh, because of, well, here's the graph. Let's just look at that. And uh, I, basically what I was having a hard time figuring out was, I was like, is this a V-shape or, or what the heck is it? So here's an 8K alignment, uh, almost a measurement right here. And then I just did a, a, another alignment at really high, like I shoved it all the way in. Then I did an average. Here's the average, the pink graph. So maybe that could be similar to what it is. I'm not 100% sure, but we have approximately 90 to 101. So actually somewhere around 100 and, uh, sorry, 100, 11 dB of pin gain. And that's a lot. It could be 10 to 11, but then uh, canal gain, um, these don't have the longest tips. So that means they're going to be adding a little bit of pin again, and I think, in fact, that's happening. That's probably why Paul is having such a hard time with these. And for me to be able to use these, I need to shove them all the way in, bottom them out, and use little tiny cut complies. And then um, I get the goods, basically. So, yeah, I mean, as far as the tuning goes on these, it's kind of like almost uh, diffuse field, almost, with uh, warmth, right? So a huge base shelf here. Base shelf is like, let's see, I think it's about 10 dB. What are we at? Uh, 89 to 98. Yeah, about yeah, almost, uh, you know, 8, eight or sorry, 9 to 10 dB of uh, pinnagain. Uh, and, um, well, I mean, they let, let the grass speak for themselves. 
I, if I looked at this graph, I would be like, huh, well, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. But listening to these headphones, the answer is yes, <laughs> like them. All right, so the bass on these, it's uh, satisfying, it has uh, quite a lot of bass. It's definitely not going to be light on the bass on anything. Uh, it's uh, nice, bouncy. It doesn't have a tremendous amount of texture like planners can have or top-of-the-line drivers, but um, it is very good and um, engaging and has a nice bounce to it. Uh, it has a good amount of meat uh, to any type of music genres that I was listening to. The mids on this are actually excellent as hell. Definitely the stage of the show, the star of the show, the stage, <laughs> star stage. The mids on this, uh, like the vocals on just about everything I heard were like really super sweet, but also fairly in my face. So if, if, that, if that's an off-putting thing, then intimacy in a headphone is, uh, well, I find it interesting. It's certainly not my go-to, but uh, maybe that's why Paul didn't like it. But they're certainly very intimate and very in your face for most genres of music. Not all, but most. Treble is actually quite good on these. And um, from the graph, you'd say, well, that's dark and whatever. And it doesn't really come across like that. It's got some nice twinkling abilities. Uh, some nice sparkles when you get a track like that, and the treble is not peaky or pushed or anything weird. It sounds really rather natural to me, although, like I said, uh, the whole tuning is a little in your face. Um, stage width is, is fairly good. Uh, planners can do better than that, but I'll call it high good, uh, good high. <laughs> um, with the right track, maybe like a 9 out of 10. With a less good track, maybe like 7 out of 10. But overall, I found the staging to be engaging and nice and uh, fairly open and organic. 3D was really quite excellent, uh, given the right track. When the As long as the mids weren't obscuring the entire show, which can happen, uh, vocals could be right in your face, but the, the staging was really nice and open and 3D and natural and almost like speakers in a room, really super sweet. And um, I said, you know, the trailing edges of the sound falling away, uh, fall away in a natural way. And so that means like um, when you have reverbs and things that are in a room, they really do feel and sound natural, like you can almost hear the space you're in. Uh, openness will give a 7.5 or 2.8 out of 10. Lacks a little bit of air to give it that like supreme open quality, shall we say, but uh, overall for 60 bucks, like nice, man, nice. I've heard a lot of $100 sets that don't come even close to this, and uh, beyond that, $200 pairs that aren't even close to this either. So uh, for volume scaling, we're going to say uh, medium to medium high. It will get in your face depending on the track. That pin again can get you, man, that 2.5K. But uh, most tracks are fairly well behaved. So let's bounce over to some music genres. And actually, just everything was killer. Uh, blues, wo uh, killer, warm, engaging, organic, but also in my face. Uh, uh, intimate, shall we say. Look at that pinna. Classical was absolutely killer. Just about every time I played anything, it was in such a nice, we'll call it pocket, like um, live venues sounded so natural, organic, uh, but slightly warm on the warm side, but um, the mids were, uh, they soared. They were uh, very textured and emotional and engaging. Super killer, classical. Disco was... Uh, some of the disco has a lot of mids, uh, but overall, I really found it all fun. Um, just super good. EDM was really super killer. Uh, EDM can be, tends to be maybe V-shaped mixes in a lot of cases. You get the big bass, the twinkly trebles, and this did super good with that. Super, super good. Super good. EDM was killer, uh, all of it. Um, and tracks that have like some cool staging effects were all right there. Uh, very engaging and fun and um, even special in some cases. Jazz was really, really good. Uh, yeah, I said, Mwah, in my face, uh, sweet and also intimate. And for jazz, that really works well for just about everything I listen to. Metal was not bad, not bad. Uh, some tracks can be a little bit much and, and don't don't even try and push the volume up too high on this. It'll get just get too much. But it didn't uh, crumble. The, the stage, everything uh, stayed together as you turned it up. It was just a lot, right? Uh, but the uh, low end really uh, gave a good amount of meat to the uh, guitars and things like that, and uh, it just, yeah, killed it. R&B was awesome, really killer bass, nice bass lines, fat and enjoyable and awesome. Loved all of it. Reggae was super killer. Uh, cymbals really um, were sparkly in a lot of tracks, which I appreciated. A lot of those tracks are recorded in old analog stuff, and psh, reggae was just killer, man. I was bopping and bouncing my head and singing along, and the vocals, oh, God, the vocals were so killer. 
you know, like Bob Marley, just male vocals, uh, female vocals on the reggae stuff, which is definitely the center of attention on most of that stuff. It should be the harmonized vocals. Just, oh, man. Chef's kiss. Rock was uh, really, really nice. <clears throat> um, I wouldn't turn it up too loud, but overall, it was, everything just hit me really good. Rock out any day to the set. Absolutely. Soundtracks are excellent. You know, deep, bombastic, epic sounding, as they should. Nice twinkles, nice little... Uh, Things here and there that you can hear in tracks, awesome. And Vaporwave was excellent for the most part. Uh, some tracks are super mid-focused. Those hurt me, but you know, they're, they're whatever. Uh, so Vaporwave was a definite awesome go. And Vintage and Lounge was sweet as hell. Um, the Buena Vista Social Club was just um, in, entrancing for me. Very good. The vocals and the instruments were just shh, damn. So if there was one thing to say, I didn't put my... Uh, um, my final thoughts, but I'll just say them. Um, there's one thing I say, this set is going to be probably in most people's faces. I would say get the deepest fit you possibly can with these things. Get them all the way in there. Get them whatever the kind of tips you got to use. Use the most powerful amp you can get your hands on because they do scale. And uh, at the end of the day, um, I might prefer these to the Olinas in some cases. Not all, not all. But uh, as far as a dynamic driver set, this is worth owning, I think, for a lot of folks. Um, especially if you enjoy an intimate sound stage and soundscape and uh, you're into blues, jazz, classical, some of those genres that don't necessarily do well with other sets, these killed it on, but also did really good with a very, very large variety of genres for me. Sorry, Paul. Uh, yeah, maybe give them another shot. I don't know. Up to you, man. But uh, these are going to get a recommendation. Absolutely 60 bucks, uh, you know, shells or whatever. Don't care. But they did really well with my library and um, maybe a little special. I think it's 60 bucks. I'm trying to think of another set that would beat them, and I can't think of anything even close. Uh, not even close. The sparkling on this is definitely going to be better than like the melees for me, for instance. And I think those are maybe like 50, 60 bucks. And um, similar to like the Olinas uh, for the extension type factor. Um, yeah, so um, took me a while to warm up to them. So. I kind of feel like sets that, you know, initially give you that wow factor, um, they tend to do worse as time goes on, and these did worse right away, and uh, built up to a point where I would enjoy to own them, and I find them to be super good, super, super good. I don't know if you'd want to call this like an etymotic style tuning with extra bass, but I kind of think of it like that. Uh, maybe they could have extended the treble shelf just a wee bit more in the uppers there to hit exactly kind of what etymotic does but overall damn man damn so uh, i think a fellow named high fry you can find him on youtube tune these and uh they're falling under the radar and they're not getting any love so here's some love bro i like these a lot he did a great job really really good tuning and uh, lcp driver those are my favorites right on talk to you on the next one